With the recent release of Fant 4 Stick, I think it's time to look at Fox's time in superhero movies and ask the question, why are they still making these? Before I get too far, it's important to be clear that not every single comic book movie by Fox sucks. In fact, they have a few excellent ones. Now, without Fox fully committing to X-Men back in 2000, it's possible the comic book movie boom would never have happened. Sure, Men in Black and Blade came first, but X-Men was one of the biggest comic book names at the time, and everyone knew about the X-Men and their comic book roots. Pretty much, X-Men was the first comic book movie that everyone knew was a comic book movie. It's impossible to predict. But it is possible without 2000's X-Men, there'd be no Marvel Cinematic Universe today. But Fox's track record is actually quite shit. From the studio that inexplicably sewed his fucking mouth shut the first time. Since 2000, Fox has produced 12 superhero films based on the numerous rights they bought from Marvel. Seven of them have rotten scores on Rotten Tomatoes. 58% of every superhero movie Fox has produced is considered crap. Let's compare this to Sony, who recently made a deal with Marvel Studios to share their remaining comic book properties. Since 2000, they have produced seven superhero movies. Three of those have rotten scores. 43% of their superhero movies are considered crap. Even if I throw in Spider-Man 3, Sony only goes to 57%, right below Fox. And if I were to throw in non-superhero comic properties like Kingsman and the Men in Black trilogy, Sony still comes out on top. That's right, Sony, the guys that already confessed they don't know how to handle their superhero properties, have a better track record than Fox. Fox has made three very good superhero movies and two passable ones. You might see a theme with these films. The only good superhero movies they've produced are X-Men movies, which are likely the easiest comic book characters ever to produce movies for. They face prejudice for being different, which means they could be used to represent many minority groups in the world today, and that their stories could easily represent social issues the world faces. Have you tried? Not being a mutant? Their biggest nemesis is the best friend of their leader. That's instant drama. And they also have the same origin. They were born that way. That's really easy to write. But even these movies have become rather redundant. In X2, the group works with Magneto until he double crosses them. In X Men First Class, Magneto helps form the group, then double crosses Xavier. In X Men Days of Future Past, the group frees Magneto from imprisonment when he double crosses them. Literally, the three best superhero movies Fox has produced have. Magneto double-crossing the group. In fact, Magneto has been a major enemy for the group in every X-Men team film. Mystique has been a major villain in most of them, and while other villains have appeared, it always seems to come down to Magneto. But that's nothing compared to the number of characters they've slaughtered in these movies. But with First Class, Days of Future Past, and to a lesser extent, The Wolverine, it did feel like Fox got the message and was now dedicating themselves to making solid superhero movies in the same vein as the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But then came Fant Stick, the worst superhero movie in a long time. Followers of my channel will know I really hated The Amazing Spider-Man 2. So when I say The Amazing Spider-Man 2 had much more going for it than Fant Stick, I want you to understand the gravity of that statement. In Amazing Spider-Man 2, some of the actors at least tried to give a solid performance despite the terrible dialogue they were given to say. And at least the Spider-Man suit looked good. Bant Forstick has none of that. The whole thing reeked of a studio just pumping out any movie they can to keep the rights to the property for a reason that has nothing to do with telling good stories. All Fox has done with their superhero movies is occasionally make a good X-Men film. The best things about the X-Men movies have been Hugh Jackman, Brian Singer, and Matthew Vaughn. And the one person who is most visible 
Bull has decided to walk away from the role after his next solo movie. So with this event, it seems like a prime time for Fox to talk to Marvel about rebooting their universe and merging with the MCU. Or the better option being they just give all their comp properties back to Marvel. Their X-Men movies are redundant, and they failed to do a solid job with any other comic book property in their catalog. Looking at the studio's track record, X-Men movies are a dice roll on whether they'll be good. Anything non-X-Men related from Fox will suck. Fox was invaluable at the beginning of the comic book movie boom. They've shown that over a decade and a half later, they can't keep up with the other superhero movies being put out there. And when a studio makes a Fantastic Four film that's possibly worse than the no-budget Roger Corman version, it becomes clear they have no fucking idea what they're doing. Hey, if you like this video, please make sure to hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe. That helps me out a lot. And if you really love this video, consider visiting my Patreon page. 